Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello there, welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravi Chandran from IIT Kanpur. So, I am introducing the course to you. Uh, we are here in the first introductory module, but then slowly uh, I have started introducing you the main concepts of the course also. This is week 1 and this is module 5. Now, in this lecture, I am going to focus on making you move towards excellence and then towards that step, I just want you to realize your potential, what are your true potentials and I will just give you tips and suggestions for developing your potential. Now, before we start, like I do in every lecture, I just want to make a quick recap of what we did in the last lecture. In the last lecture, so I told you that uh, I need not teach you soft skills, soft skills very explicitly, but implicitly also I have been teaching some skills in the past uh, uh, two, three lectures and particularly I have been teaching something on self-management and then about emotional regulation and also about time management skills. Now, in the previous one particularly, I was focusing on the self-management skill set and then if you look at this skill set, there are about hundreds of them and many more, but then I focused on 9 core important self management skill set which are the first one self awareness, self confidence, mindset particularly growth mindset and fixed mindset, optimistic mindset and then pessimistic mindset, emotional balance, stress healing, coping with failure, patience, tolerance and trustworthiness, perceptive in, uh, perceptiveness and last but not the least spiritual intelligence. I, as I said, I will be spending more time elaborately on these ones. Currently for this particular uh, module and this particular lecture, I just want to focus on developing your excellence. Now, when you have to move towards excellence, what are the things that you will keep in mind? First, what is excellence? Excellence is an outstanding feature. It is indicating that you are possessing good qualities in high degree. Now, some individuals are very gifted, they are multi talented and they are excellent in many aspects of life, whether it is sports or academics or in business or in personal life, everywhere some people are quite excellent. But all individuals are excellent at least in one field or other. Now, it is high time that you ask the question, what is it that you are so excellently doing? If people are uh, talking about you and then they say very good things about you, they identify you as a very outstanding person in what aspect of your life? Where will they say that you are really excellent, you are an outstanding person? Are you an outstanding student? Are you an outstanding teacher? An outstanding doctor? An excellent engineer? An excellent social worker? An excellent player such as uh, you could be an excellent uh, cricketer? Excellent uh, swimmer? So, where are you excelling? Now, identify at least one core area where people will say that you are excellent and then if you have, if you are just identifying that, you also ask about yourself and then try to rate. How would you rate yourself as a person in an overall sense? And then how would somebody rate you, the way they look at you, the way they look at your work? Would they call you like poor, average, above average or good, very good, excellent, outstanding, distinguished? So, how would they classify you? 
and in some cases they think that you are really distinguished, but then in your opinion you think that you are not really that distinguished and you may think that you are just above average. What is it in your life you think that you are actually excellent? What is that aspect in you? You think if you are not excellent now, you can reach that to that level of excellence. Is there a creative self that is there in you that can paint so much, so better, you can become an excellent painter, you can become an excellent poetry writer, you can become an excellent novelist or as I said any technical aspect of your life that can make you reach excellence. Think about it, there is no hurry, even you just make a pause of this video and then write in your notebook, what do people tell about me, how do they rate me? How do I rate about myself? Where do I think that I am really excellent? Now, if you think that re you are really excellent or you can even achieve excellence in a particular area, then let us ask the next question. If you want to excel in something, what do you need? What kind of qualities that you need? Obviously, the qualities that I talked about before or the ones you need. But the next question is, do you have those qualities in you? Do you have that drive in you to achieve that excellence? Now, the next one is, as a kind of uh, uh, self-assessment mechanism in your notebook, just try to identify five of your traits in you that will certainly take you to excellence. Five qualities, five traits. So, it could be something like that I have noted focus, disciplined, determined, strong willpower or very optimistic, dedicated, punctual etcetera, but you just uh, you, you do not immediately write whatever I have mentioned here, but you just think about what is it that is making you excellent and if you have to achieve that, what are the qualities that you have in you, write that. Now, if you think that you are lacking in some of these positive qualities and then you can clearly identify that some negative qualities are overweighing some of the positive qualities that you must possess. What are those negative qualities? What are those limitations? Can you, can you identify five of them? Is it something like laziness? Do people tell you that is excellent but lazy or is outstanding postponer? is very good in delay, okay. So, all are like negative, but then they are euphemistically pricing you. Addictions, it could be some kind of uh, cigarette or drug or uh, even watching movies endlessly on TV or social media, Facebooking and all that. So, uh, uh, there is like just for fun, you do it for half an hour or something and then just you make that your entire life and then you spend 24 into 7 sitting before uh, these media and gadgets and then you just completely lose yourself before that and you lose control. Now, is that a limitation in you that is stopping you to reach that level of excellence? Ask yourself, where is it that you are just getting bogged down? What is it that is preventing you? Could it be low self-esteem? Could it be self-doubts like thinking that, oh, that guy can be excellent, but how can I become excellent like him or her? Or just your own negative thinking, so that is coming in your mind, no, 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 you are no good, not like that person. So, ask yourselves and then just identify those ones and then write it and then do one more small task. Ask a very close friend or a well-wisher or a neighbor or a senior uh, person, just ask the person what that person thinks that you have in you, the good qualities, the traits that will make you become an excellent person and then the limitations which actually bring you down. What is it in their perception? Sometimes you may not have a real perception about you and what others tell about you could be much more relevant for you. Just find out, this is the first step if you want to reach towards excellence, you should be aware of yourself, what are your merits, what are your limitations and what are not just merits, but those excellent qualities that will ensure that you will definitely become an outstanding person. Now, having identified that, let us go to the next concept that I want you to become very clear. 
the way I approach these soft skills is something not as I was telling from the beginning that it is a kind of cosmetic touch in you that outside appearance you try to change and then by which you try to make people believe that you have a very strong personality. Now, I want to use an inner core approach. I want your inner core to be strengthened stronger so that it exudes outside. So, people can see clearly what is happening inner by the way you are expressing it outside. Now, what do I mean by this? What I mean to tell you is there are two ways you can make your inner core very strong or you can make your inner core very weak. So, there are two approaches. So, if you follow the one that I am going to list it this side, the left hand side, you are going to become stronger and stronger and your inner core is becoming stronger and stronger. Now, if you are this kind or if even if you have some symptoms of this, you need to know that you will only become weaker and weaker as far as your inner core is concerned. Look at this, what will make you stronger? The law of abundance. This means believing that the universe is wealthy, that the world is full of resources and riches and then it is not only you, it is going to give for everybody and then whatever you need to get, you will get. So, nobody can stop it. So, there is no need to join the rat race, no need to fight, no need to compete. If only you develop your inner core, so everything else will come to you automatically. The contrary view, the opposite view that can make you weak is the thinking what we call as poverty of mind. The mind thinks that resources are scarce, so it has to be uh, hoarded or not shared or snatched away from somebody. So, you have to be in the rat race, you have to fight, you have to compete, you have to kill, you have to beat each other to get something from the other person. Poverty of mind, thinking that I cannot have enough. So, in order to have enough, I have to actually plunder, take from somebody else. So, in the other case, law of abundance believes that I give and then in giving I get something more and the other person also believes because that universal law says that there is uh, so much of resource uh, everywhere in the world. Now, this side again you have courage. So, you can take decisions, you can make choice in your life using courage or if you want to make the inner core weak, you use fear to make decisions in your life. Now, remember whatever decisions you made out of fear, you will definitely regret and when you regret, you will worry why you did not do that thing using courage and when you worry, you kill your body, mind, energy, okay, you do not live anymore. So, this side if you look at it, you use courage, you risk and then you have the confidence and then you have the faith or trust in people, in things, in an outer spiritual being that you believe that will help you. You believe that the entire world will conspire to help you to get things. You believe that the outer force that is there in the universe will help you if you try to help yourself. Now, on this side, you are afraid. So, you are restrictive, you are afraid of taking risks, you restrict yourself, you have lot of inhibitions, you suffer from low self-esteem and you have suspicion and doubt. You do not have faith you do not trust people, you suspect people, you doubt people. Now, this will weaken your inner core. Now, some other set optimism will make you stronger, pessimism will make you weaker, growth mindset will make you stronger that you are willing to change, we are willing to adapt and we are willing to learn from failure. Now, this set fixed mindset. So, thinking that I will not learn anything because I know everything. And I cannot learn anything from another person because he is after all inferior to me, I am superior to him. So, this kind of thinking, rigidity of thought is not going to take you anywhere. And in fact, this side, if at all there is a failure, the person with a growth mindset will learn from failure, whereas the person who has this fixed mindset will actually be feeling depressed from failure. 
will be completely bogged down. So, he will not be able to bounce back. So, this side the person overall expects all the time the best to happen. A very incorrigible optimist, he thinks that if the day is bad today, I will become better tomorrow. If tomorrow is not better, he thinks that day after tomorrow will still become better for me. I will be happier all the time. Now, this side, this person always expects that the worst thing will happen to me. Okay, I'm, I, he believes in luck, but this side the person believes in work and he thinks that he can make his luck. Now, you have to first ask yourself where you fit in, are you stronger already or are you weaker like already forming this side of the uh, inner core. Now, within these two choices, the one you make this side will make you stronger. So, just give a thought to it and then in case you have the uh, weaker kind of uh, set of thinking that you have in your mind, try to remove them. You will not be able to remove them immediately, you have to give its own frequency you have to reduce the number of times that you are afraid, reduce that, do the things that you are most afraid again and again. So, you will gain confidence, you will come this side. Okay. So, I will come back more about confidence and other things later. Right now, I just want you to think, it is important that to reach excellence, you need to develop a very strong inner core. Now, towards developing a strong inner core, I just want you to visualize the process of excellence that is built upon this uh, inner core strengthening. Now, if you look at it how I started in the first two, three lectures and until now I am trying to tell you that first know your potential, develop your potential, know where you are strong, identify at least one area where you are very strong, you are excellent. Now, create a vision whether it is uh, going back to Steve Jobs' talk or beginning with the end in mind, I was telling you that think about what you want in your life at the end. What do you want some important people in your life to talk about you at the point of your death? What is the vision that you have created for your life? And then follow that by identifying your mission that is the step by step process by which you can achieve your vision. Now, in between, once you have created a vision, remember this Japanese term kaikaku, which implies radical change. So, once you have created a vision, for example, I want to change the country. So, what? Do, how would you like to do that? So, I would join administrative service, fine. So, then you create a mission statement. So, I will practice, I will prepare like this, I will give the interview by this time, I will try to uh, crack it in the first time, if not I will try second time, third time. So, you have the plan, vision and then mission. Now, that kaikaku indicates a radical change. For instance, you go to completely a new job or completely a new area in which you are posted. So, that is a radical change. Now, when you create a vision for yourself, actually you want a radical change, completely different kind of transformation that is required in your life. Now, once you try that, attempt it, then go for Kaizen that is continuous improvement, it's, which is literally meaning good change, but it is continuous, not as radical as uh, the previous one but it is continuous, every day you make some improvement, some change, constant improvement on that. One centimeter improvement in the quality of change that you are making each day, that also matters, little bit every day. Now, once you do this, then you try to move forward, you created a vision, you worked out a mission and then you achieved your vision using that mission. Now, what next? you need to move forward, you need to go ahead. Now, if you are able to reach from this level to the other level, you can go to many other levels. Now, after those levels, what? That is next question. But first, you try to reach other levels, push yourself, how far can you go? Now, to do this, you need to have an enhanced vision. 
first you thought that oh this is the mountain if I climb and then that is the end of it. So, you climbed you reach the peak and after reaching the peak there is a plateau kind of uh, space and you are walking around there and then suddenly you realize that is a there is a higher peak than this and the vision from here is so beautiful, but you wonder that can I not go climb higher reach higher and then take a better view from that. So, you try to climb higher now the climb is tougher difficult the road is much more dangerous risky, but then the reward is also higher. So, you are going to see things which you have never seen before you are going to experience completely new things completely it is going to transform you and take you to the next level. Now, at this point I just want to mention to you there is one aspect of motivation which writers like uh, David McClelland highlighted which they called as need achievement or NH trait. I will talk about this maybe in the next lecture or so, but at this point this need achievement is also close to what Abraham Maslow called as self actualization. Now, let us take a quick look at self actualization uh, and then that is the core concept I want to introduce in this lecture. I will continue with other related ideas in the next one, but what is self actualization and why you need to know this. Now, Maslow while talking about motivations the drive that we need the kick that we need to do things. He talked about this in his book theory of motivation and then he introduced this famous pyramid of motivation in a five stage. There are some limitations to this theory let us not worry about it now because that does not concern our core concept related to the course. Now, at the lowest level he was talking about physiological needs which he calls as basic needs and then next is safety needs. What does he mean by physiological needs such as our hunger, such as sex, such as sleeping, such as drinking okay, the basic fundamental animal instinctual needs which need to be fulfilled if at all you want to think better and he says that man will work for this. So, why, why will you motivated to do something the first thing people will say I have to fill my stomach so, that is what he says yeah not just filling stomach, but then you also want to fulfill certain other needs related to your basic physiological functioning. Now, the next level he says you will not be happy only by fulfilling that you will still aspire for higher needs what are they. So, they can be classified under safety needs. Now, you feel that you are just like an animal you are getting food you are just going on road and then you are getting food you are working like a daily laborer you are sleeping on road, but then when it rains or when it is getting hot or when it is uh, suddenly there is thunder or something or snakes come when you are sleeping. So, you want to be safe. So, you want to build a house okay, and you want to live in that kind of safe environment. So, not only you, you want the family members all to also to be kept in the safe environment. So, you go for safety needs. Now, once you reach that, once you have crossed this basic level, then you feel that you should also belong to your family. Okay. You, then comes this emotional need, you want to be loved. So, you should note that although he is putting it in five stages, you should know that there are many people who stop uh, stop at the first basic physiological needs they are satisfied with getting food and then they do not think higher. There is next level people are satisfied with safety needs and then they stop okay, they think this is enough. The third need uh, uh, at an emotional level. So, you want to be associated with all people and people should love and uh, reciprocate your love also. Now, it could be the love from a partner, okay. it could be the love from a family, it could be the love from friends whatever it is you want to belong to your group belongingness. So, you, you feel that you are part of them and then gaining recognition by doing something and then appreciation from these people is again motivating you. Now, once you reach here there are many people who stop here like uh, 
boy finds a girl and then he falls in love with the girl and the girl is very attractive intelligent and then he would do anything for her he will move mountains he will do all these things so he gets a good job he works hard to impress her he got a bungalow and then after that they got children and then they educated the children so in the movie they show that they live happily ever after and the need stops here that is love and belonging needs but maslow says that one more step you will still go ahead that is for your esteem needs okay you want not only that particular girl to love you or that particular man to shower love on you but you want some kind of respect from the society that you belong to the world that is surrounding you now again you will go one step higher maybe you build a small hospital in the vicinity you donate lot of money to charity so you help lot of uh, uh, children who are in poverty you help them in their education so you do something or other so that you get a feeling that your esteem is elevated now here comes the crux of the theory that up to here we all feel that yes we are there we are doing it but maslow goes one step higher from this basic needs emotional needs esteem needs and then he says there is this self actualization need now this comes under growth needs now again it is ironic is not treating the basic needs fulfilling your safety needs as part of the real creative growth that you need as a man the actual growth need for him comes at the higher level which he calls as self actualization need now quickly if i put it in a simple manner basic need you just think from your perspective you, you think that i'm comfortable enough now i have food okay so i am comfortable now in safety you feel i feel safe enough so my house is good lightning will not affect it rain i'm protected so after that in the emotional need you get a feeling that i'm part of a group they have accepted me i belong to them in esteem needs you gain recognition you say i am known people know me okay so i am recognized i am well known so people like me i am respected okay everybody knows and then they give lot of love and respect now in the final stage you start asking the question i have done all these things but i don't know who am i and then you identify i am me okay it's me i am able to do this now more on self actualization for maslow it's the highest level of need for personal growth and self fulfillment realization and fulfillment of one's talents and potentialities is what we call as self actualization and in another way you can say to actualize what one is potentially and authenticate that expression of one's creativity efficient perceptions of reality that is they don't have distortion of reality they are able to see what is real and don't get clouded by any kind of illusions they are comfortable accepting themselves and others they are self reliant and independent people those who are self actualized they uh, don't have to rely on other people and then they trust themselves and they are very independent they are able to use their own experiences for judgment they don't have to go and seek somebody's opinion so they know how they can form judgment on their own experiences they are very natural and spontaneous okay they don't have any artificial kind of self they are not hypocrites uh, they are very humble they are not uh, pretentious and then they are very natural and then they have this continued freshness of appreciation as if they see sunlight sunshine for the first time as if they are smelling the rose for the first time so each day is a new day each day is newly lived newly experienced so they live afresh every day every moment and then the bonds which they maintain sometimes they are with very few people but then it's a very deep loving endearing bond that they try to maintain and interestingly 
they can be in crowd, but at the same time they are very comfortable with solitude. So, they can connect to the universe when they, when they self-actualize. The other interesting fact about this self-actualized people is that they can laugh at themselves and apart from their humility, they also have this so-called peak experiences. Maslow spends about 50 pages in the book Theory of uh, Motivation only to talk about peak experiences, but right now it is enough to know it is that kind of excited moment in, you, in which you feel that your self is at the highest form of fulfillment, you did your level best, it is more than excellence, it is above excellence and then you reach that moment and then you cherish it. And then towards the end, they are also spiritually enlightened people. Again about this, I will spend more in the coming lecture. Before I conclude, one or two thoughts that Maslow wanted us to think about when he introduced this self-actualization. This is the way he defines self-actualization. He says, a musician must make music, an artist must paint, a poet must write. If he is to be ultimately at peace with himself, what a man can be, he must be. What a man can be, he must be. This is what he calls as self-actualization, but the interesting fact that he also tells us later, he says that less than 1 percent of adults achieve total self-actualization. This means many people try, many people want to reach that level, but it is just less than 1 percent of adults actually achieve this. So, self-actualization, he says, rarely happens, certainly in less than 1 percent of adult population. Having said this, you may ask now, so should I try for self-actualization? Of course, that is what I am implying that you should try. You should be among that 1 percent of the adults who actualize that fully, who realize that fully, so reach that level even if it is just 1 percent. And then he also says that the fact that most of us function most of the time on a level lower than that of self-actualization. We are not reaching that level at all. Most of us are bogged down in physiological needs, some of them in emotional needs, some of them in esteem needs where they combine power also, but many do not even aspire to reach that self-actualization need. Now, he says that is the psychopathology of normality, okay. that, that, that is the disease of being normal, that is the disease of being just a, just a normal human being living a normal life. Now, why is he saying that that is not going to make you happy? Why? Think about this before I conclude. He says that if you plan on being anything less than you are capable of being, if you plan on being anything less than you are capable of being, you will probably be unhappy all the days of your life. So, the risk is that some of you may not even think of self-actualization, may not reach that level, fine. But even aspiring to that level is actually going to make you happy. Conversely, if you think that you have the potential, but then you do not want to realize that potential, you do not want to actualize yourself to reach that level of creativity and spontaneity and make yourself the complete authentic self, if you do not do that, he says that you are going to be unhappy all the days of your life. Think about it, do you want to be unhappy all the rest of your life or you want to live a happy and peaceful life? Now, obviously you are going to say that it is the other thing that you want to be happy and peaceful towards the rest of your life. Think about where you are, reassess your potentialities and aspire to reach that level of self-actualization. I will talk about two more aspects of self-actualization that is close to need achievement and spiritual wealth in the next lecture. Thank you. Just take a relook at the lecture and then particularly think about self-actualization and especially before you go to bed today, think about self-actualization. How can you reach that level? Thank you once again.